I've been a firefighter for going on 13 years. I was going to the fire station. Oncoming was Bill at the stop sign. Uh, we waved to each other. 10 minutes later, we get a call for Officer Down. And a uh, moment in my life I'll never forget. Bill was at the scene, they got a call. Um, there was debris in the highway. His job was to remove the debris. The driver was on a substance, an illegal substance. She didn't see him and hit him full on. I remember going home and talking to my wife and we were sitting there and phone rings. It's about 7.30 at night and one of my employees had called me. He says, Mike, he goes, we have a customer here that uh, is buying a blue light bulb and wants to put a blue bulb in the porch, which is something you do to honor fallen officers. She wants to know what to do with the money. So the thought was, I'll tell you what, just get a, get a bucket and throw it on the countertop. And uh, the wheels started turning in my head. I'm like, well, how can we do something more? Mike and I have always been this kind of like our brothers of each other, basically. We've always wanted to help people. And when this blue light idea came about, uh, I'm like, let's just do it and we'll take care of the community. I then made some phone calls and we secured about 500 light bulbs. The next day we showed up and unloaded these 500 light bulbs. We had a bucket on the, the countertop. Anyone that wanted to donate could put money into this bucket. Or we ended up raising about $6,000 for the family within a couple of days. They just, they put the bulbs out. They wanted people to come take them. If they took two, they weren't saying, why are you taking two? Um, who, who just gives, who does that? Driving around to see my neighborhood and hundreds of neighborhoods and businesses with blue light bulbs. I knew we were loved. At uh, Bill's funeral, as I was walking out of there, and I thought to myself, how can we go beyond that? How can we continue to give? And so we were somewhat aware of the Minnesota 100 Club, and we just continued to look into it and, and to talk to others about the 100 Club and got really involved with that. And we're like, this could be an extension of that blue ball. My name is Mike Jennings, and I'm the president of the Minnesota 100 Club. When a first responder dies, their pay stops on that very same day, and there is no provisions made for funeral, paying for the mortgage or anything. We are the gap between the time of death and the time that they receive assistance from either the state or federal government. The huge sense of, you know, relief because ultimately that's what they're providing to those who are injured or who have fallen in the line of duty. My name is Josh Duda. I am a flight paramedic. I've been in EMS for over 25 years, been a paramedic for over 20 of those. I did not find out about the 100 Club until after our crash, so just a couple years ago. Uh, reported to, to duty, a normal day at work. We took the return flight going back to our home base. Everything on that flight was, was perfectly normal. That is until on the approach, the pilot decided that he didn't like something he saw and wanted to do a go-around. Shortly after that, it set, set off a chain of events that caused us to start spinning uh, and eventually fall pretty much straight out of the sky. The Minnesota 100 Club definitely came in and helped with some of those other expenses. It's the additional stuff, the my wife having to take time off of work to, to be there, it's that loss of income that never really gets accounted into the equations. Service organizations such as the Minnesota 100 Club really are community organizations. It's people, people like Mike and Mark here from Go For Ace that help those organizations really thrive and grow. It really is a community effort. Ace Hardware has been absolutely incredible. They've just been really, really great. It's, it's been a great relationship. When Mike and Mark called me and said, you know, we have this, these funds for you, we want to give them to you, you know, I kind of decided with that I wanted to use it for good. If through Bill's death we can all learn something, if good can come of it, you know, it's like throwing a, a stone into the water, it ripples. And those ripples continue for a very, very, very long time. And I look at Mark and Mike with the same thing with what they did for Wyatt and I. They made a choice, they wanted, they wanted to help. And from that choice, I made a choice to help multiple organizations and those are helping people. And so if we can start ripples all over, we can all be a part of something small, something large, something medium to throw your stone, make a ripple, make a difference.